Lux presents Hollywood. Lisa Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, bring you the Lux Radio Theater. Starring Dan Daly and Ann Baxter in Ticket to Tomahawk. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keel. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know just how to tell you about tonight's play because it doesn't follow any prescribed pattern. Perhaps I should just say that out of the 20th Century Fox Studios, the very capable team of Mary Anita Luce and Richard Sale put their heads together and concocted a gay comedy that pokes fun at the traditional Western epic. As our hero of the Old West, we have a traveling salesman from the East, Dan Daly, recreating his original role as our heroine, Anne Baxter, also playing her original role a gun-toting deputy marshal. Now, you see what I mean about this being a very different Western. So I suggest you just sit back, relax, and let us buy you a ticket to Tomahawk. Of course, now is a time when many tickets are being purchased for those long-awaited vacations from work. But I know that Lux girls will keep right on with their daily Lux toilet soap facials no matter where they are. You know, a lovely Lux complexion may be your ticket to romance. Now, ticket to Tomahawk, starring Dan Daly as Johnny Jamison and Ann Baxter as Kit Dodd. <laughs> The town of Epitaph, a little woollier and wilder than most. Three strangers have just arrived in Epitaph in search of the sheriff. Howdy, gents. What can I do for you? Friend, my name is Johnny Jameson. These two gentlemen and I have just come from the... Oh. Now, what did you do that for? She talks too much. Raise your mitts, partner, or I'll cut you off pocket high. Where's the sheriff? Mr. Dodge is down the hall. And I wouldn't bother none was I you. He was fixing to ride out and meet the new railroad train. We just been taking care of that train, mister. And we're taking care of the sheriff, too. Took care of the train. Mm -hmm. Who's the doodle of the Him. Passenger in the train. We picked him up on his way here to get the sheriff. Kind of amusing, ain't it? Him bringing us to the sheriff. You're making a big mistake, stranger. I wouldn't let Mr. Dodge catch you hanging around here. Keep your hands up. On account of he can put a bullet through your buttonhole and never you wouldn't touch your shirt. And hope in his granddaughter. Hmm. Interesting, ain't it, Tracy? Who else is back there? Fellow named Bishop. He happens to own most of the new railroad. Well, let's get him, Hela. Oh, you're making a mistake, fellas. Now, I'm telling you again. Just uh... you stay in front of us. One more peep out of you, and Boothill's going to have a new... Railroad's the biggest thing that ever happened to the state of Colorado. It's the opening of the West. It'll get the wealth of the nation out of the far mountains. When and if the railroad's ever finished, Mr. Baker. It'll be finished, Miss Kitt. Some folks don't want this railroad. Of course they don't. It's going to run the stagecoach line right out of business. Oh, Colonel Dawson and his gang aren't going to like that, Mr. Bishop. That's why I want your grandpa around, just in case Dawson's been. Grandpa, look out! Oh. Hey, the lad, Miss Kitt. Grandpa. Well, I warned them. Oh, Grandpa, they got you. Just in my arm, honey. My shooting arm. You killed them. You killed them both. That's what I carry shooting iron for, Mr. Bishop. I'm beholden, Miss Kitt. Mighty beholden. Oh, not to me, Mr. Bishop. They were grandpa's me. Hey, there's one more of my family, Kit. He come in with them, too. Now, uh, just a minute. What's going on about... Lady. Lady, that gun's pointing at me. Is it? Put him in jail, Chuckabee. We'll give him a fair trial this afternoon and hang him in the morning. Hang me for what? 
I'm just a drummer. I'm selling subscriptions to the Saturday Evening Post. And I also have a fine line of Chinese firecrackers, Roman candles, and a skyrocket. And a complete assortment of hand-painted mustache cups. You could use one, too, Pop. Ever been to a necktie party, dude? No. Well, you're going to one tomorrow. Yours. But you can't do that. I'm innocent. You was in with those other two coyotes. Me? How do you think I got the zagger in my head? You think a chicken laid it? Ask him. He saw them dust me. That's right, Miss Kitt. Then why'd you come here if it wasn't to turn Grandpa's lights out? To tell the sheriff that engine number one of the Tomahawk and Western Railroad is stuck five miles out of town with a boulder on its rails. What'd you say? On the way here for help, I happened to run into these two gentlemen. Oh, now look, lady. All you gotta do is check with the engineer and the conductor when they get here. If he was a passenger, well, that maybe... sounds reasonable, Grandpa. If I was feeling reasonable. Only I'm not. I'm giving you the chance to get out of town, dude. But if you're still here by sundown, you're going to become a permanent resident. Oh, yeah? Well, it's a free country, and I got a right to come and go as I please. And I just got here. Mister, you just left. Come along, Grandpa. You better get that arm of yours over to Dr. Yeah. Phillips. Oh, wait till the Saturday evening post hears about this. She can't do this to me. Oh, yes, she can. There's six lonesome grays on the edge of town on account of her. Now, was I you, I'd get back to them that train track fast. I intend to. I gotta get the tomahawk. You're gonna have company, dude. Me and Sheriff Dodd. That there train's gotta get through. And no varmints pushing boulders and pulling six shooters is gonna stop it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just give me my sample case. This is a fine town. That's all I can say. It's fine town. <laughs> The sheriff can't travel. Who says he can? The doc says so, Mr. Bishop, and that's good enough for me. Grandpa's staying right here in Epitaph. But I don't dare let that train go without you, Sheriff. What? Dawson and his gang. I'm tangles. taking care of that right now. Kid, honey, you raise your right hand. I still, Grandpa. You swear solemn to uphold the law? So help me, Grandpa. And I hereby make you my deputy. Oh, Grandpa, you don't mean it. Of course he doesn't mean it, don't I? This here female can outride, outshoot, and outsmart any road agent this side of Pike's Beach. So she's taking over in my place. You just leave everything to me, Grandpa. I'll rest for a day, honey, then cut over the mountains to Tomahawk by horse. I'll get there for you, Will. Yes, sir, Grandpa. How soon is that there train going to be moving, Mr. Bishop? Well, uh, I'm not sure. Let me talk to the engineer. You wait here with me, granddaughter. Time might palavered with you personal. Yes, Grandpa? Kid, this is the first time you hit the trail alone. I mean, I won't be around to keep any eye on you. You know what I mean? Uh-uh. Well, uh... Well, it's like the bees and the flowers. Flowers get all full of honey, and then the bees start flocking around them like... Well... When a girl gets to be your age, it means... Well, it means something, I think. I... I don't follow, Grandpa. You don't? No. Oh. Well, uh... Well, girls are girls, see? Uh-huh. Boys are boys, see? And it's nature's law that... Well, anyhow, that's how it goes. What I'm trying to say is, I'm trusting you, honey. You can trust me, Grandpa. I'll get that engine through. It's not the engine I'm worried about. I don't stand it, Grandpa. Well, you better get going, honey, and just be a good girl. Sure, Grandpa. You take care of yourself. I'll see you in some hall. Doggett, hey, come here. Any sidewinder start sweet talking that gal? You got my blessing to part his hair, understand? Got you, Sheriff. You got any guess what Dawson and them ass skunks of his will be up to now? All I know is they'll do everything they can to stop the train from going through. But I sure wish I knew what in particular. got cooled off. And as for that train, well, it's going to leave Epitaph in an hour. All right, let it leave. But it's never going to reach Tomahawk. I 
sure hope you know what you're talking about, Dawson. There's a posse going to ride herd on that train. That's just what I got in mind. Dakota, you're going to join up with that posse. None of them know you. It's a cinch. And then what? Well, Fargo and Battle drift into camp tonight with dynamite. The three of you are going to blow up that engine. It's as good as done, boss. Meanwhile, I'll see what I can do to stir up the engine. Oh, now, wait a minute. Shut up. Yeah, but them engines ain't fussy. Get them riled enough and they'll bump us, too. That's a chance we'll have to take. All right, Dakota. Get going. You don't have nothing to worry about, Mr. Bishop. Why, this here little engine? I know. And I know you're a fine engineer, sweetie. But... And now, how far is it to Tomahawk? Sixty miles. And you've got to get there by Saturday noon, or our franchise is canceled. Sixty miles? Why, we can knock off a run like that in less than three hours. Uh, I'm afraid it's going to take a little longer, sweetie. Mountains? <laughs> they don't bother my girl, none. Not mountains. No tracks. Why, just look at her. She's got enough weight in her driver. She... No tracks! Not between here and Dead Horse Point. No tracks, he says. We didn't have time to finish the right of way, but at Dead Horse Point, the track begins again. And how far is that from here? Forty miles. I got 33 tons of Okamoto. How am I going to get to Tomahawk without tracks? Take a look over there. You? There's your answer. Those mules go pull you to Dead Horse Point. Mules? I won't do it. I won't do it. Stop your squalling ten foot and kill the fires in your boiler. Remember what I said, Sweeney. Tomahawk by Saturday noon or we lose the franchise. Come on, you skinners. We haven't done all day. Get your lines. This is a long, tough haul. That's fun, ma'am. You in charge here? I reckon I am. Why? Well, I was on my way over to Tomahawk, ma'am. Figured maybe you could use extra gun on the trail. Well, what's your name, stranger? They call me Dakota, ma'am. Just a poor roving wrangler. That, uh, gun of yours. You know how to shoot that thing? Oh, yes, ma'am. Why, Bill Hickok taught me they don't come no better. And you're heading for a tomahawk, huh? Yes, ma'am. I hear they need a new peace officer up there. Well, we need every hand we can get. I reckon you do. Why, right, thank you, ma'am. And if there's anything special you want done, why, just you wiggle your little thing. Chuck it in? Ma'am. He's kind of pretty, huh? Now, you listen to me, Miss Kate. Your grandpapa says that I'm just... Yes. And I thought that everything had happened that could happen. Well, what's it now, Mr. Bishop? The ticket agent. He's just discovered something terrible. Like what? The railroad charter. Just listen to what it says. And this charter will have been fulfilled only if said company shall be operating a train between Epitaph and Tomahawk by noon of September 5th, 1876, with at least one paying passenger given safe transportation. So we've got to have the passenger, Miss Kitt. Passenger, huh? Kitt, for heaven's sake, find some greenhorn. Oh, but nobody's very keen for the Tomahawk Trail now, Mr. Dick. But if we don't get a passenger, we'll forfeit everything. Yeah, who in tarnation be fooling us? You're the ticket agent, huh? I told you to get out of town. That's just what I am trying to do. To... You mean that, friend, you... You want to buy a ticket? On the first train out of here. Oh, my. For heaven's sake, tell the gentleman the ticket. You're just being me witness, Mr. Bishop. It ain't on my head. But here, here's your ticket, friend. Yeah, what ain't on your head? Blood. Blood? Whose blood? Yours. I won't do it. I'll be dogged if I'll ride herd on a toad that helped put a blue whistler into Grandpa. For the last time, I had nothing to do with it. I am an agent for the Saturday evening post, Chinese fireworks, and mustache cups. Kid, it's your job to take that train to Tomahawk and give his passengers safe conduct. You mean I've got to take care of him? Just like he was your own husband. All right. But as soon as we reach Tomahawk, I'm going to become a widow. Now, wait a minute. Uh, oh, what train? What happened to the cars? Is the right a locomotive, son? They say it's quite a thrill. Loco? Yeah, yeah, but the tracks are gone, too. What are those mules? Now, what did you do that for? You're asking too many questions, dude. But I'm not going. I am not going to ride on an engine. Sure, sure, Chuckity. Tie the dude to a chair on top of the locomotive. So that's the funniest remark I've heard since I left. Chuckity? Well? I'll hurry up with the chair. <laughs> Now, 
on, dude. That's how come Tuckett is trying to lose. Yeah. Go get your victim. Then what? We're staying here till daybreak. You promised not to run away, and I'll give you the freedom of the camp. I'll promise you nothing. You heard him, Tuckett. If he starts to wander, put his lights out. Are you going somewhere, Miss Kip? Well, Dakota says a couple of strangers just rode in. I better see who they are. Hands, we feel a lot safer now. Uh, what are you boys doing out this way? We're riding a telegraph line, man. The Arapaho's been cutting wires. Well, Dakota? Why, they look all right to me, Miss Doc. Just the uh, two of you, huh? Well, let them stay, Dakota. Fix them up with some biscuits and beans. Yes, ma'am. You, uh, you bring the dynamite? Plenty. In my saddlebag. Well, keep it there. I'm going to wait till it's darker. I will walk away and I will follow the road. Hey, you bet you could sing. Nobody. But I keep on trying. Well, you slip talking, dude, huh? Then hey, where'd you get back to the talk? This? In my travel cases. I forgot to mention I also travel for the great Midwestern Guitar Company. I never heard that song before. I was in Chicago a while back, and they sang it there on a show. I sing it some more. Why? You heard me, dude. Sing. Yes, ma'am. Oh, we're all the wind. And a whisper of the willow. Time again, time again, time again, fine. I dreamt of my true love asleep on her pillow. Time again. Into a lot of shows, huh? Mm, a few. Lots of pretty girls, probably. Wearing tights like they now. Well, naturally. Yes, the little Chicago girls sure were pretty. Sam says I'm homely as a mud fence. He's crazy. You mean I'm as pretty as they are? You're prettier. Dry gullet in me. Didn't the fella ever tell you you were pretty? Well, Jean Bailey was going to what? I think. What stopped him? Grandpa started. Why? Oh, he says that's Jezebel talking. If a gal listens to it, she'll fall into the pit. Haven't you ever known any other fellas? Only my grandpa. Oh, I mean, fellas that were stuck on you, you know. Gentle and kind. Oh, my grandpa is just about the kindest man you'd ever meet. Well, I recall the time they hanged Buckskin Tony in it. They didn't fix the news quite right. So Grandpa just couldn't stand it. Soft hearted, huh? Terrible. Got out his six shooter and blew Buckskin's head off so he wouldn't choke to death. <laughs> well, I gotta check the camp. Good night, dude. Sure is a pretty night. Dakota said. Well, he said those stars are trying to twinkle just like my eyes. He did, huh? What'd you say? That Grandpa once buried a man for sweet talking me like that. Yeah, well, I don't know, but it might be worth it. You say something, dude? No, ma'am. Good night, Miss Kit. Along the mountainous trail between Epitaph and Tomahawk, there's a strange encampment. A locomotive, a herd of mules and a young female deputy sheriff in charge. Mm-hmm. 
It's late at night. Deep in the shadows, Dakota and henchmen await their chance to blow up the locomotive. While in front of the campfire, Johnny Jamison, the dude drummer, struggles with his insomnia. And it looks like I'm never going to see my wandering. I thought I told you to go to sleep. I can't go to sleep. And would you please put away that pistol? You know, you look harmless enough. You don't look like a killer. How come you took it up? Why can't you believe me? I'm not a killer. I'm a traveling salesman, a drummer. Traveled all over, huh? Well, not as far as I'd like to go. But last year, for instance, I went to Milwaukee, Wisconsin. That's the city where they make beer. That was on the trip I made to Minnesota to see the Mississippi River. Oh, what are you barking about? Mississippi River isn't in Minnesota. I beg your pardon. The Mississippi River starts in Minnesota. It's just one foot across. Just imagine. I stepped over it. Two years before that, when I was down in New Orleans, it took me 20 minutes on a river packet to cross it. What'd you do on the New Orleans? Cards. Playing cards. Yeah, that's New Orleans, southern Louisiana, and east Texas. Good territory. Cards? Just cards? Just cards? Yeah. Take a look at these cards. Take the whole pack. Seal of paper. Best quality there is. No marked decks, no cold decks. All high-class stuff. Incidentally... That's the deuce of spades you got there. That's right. Say, hey, that's, that's quite a trick. Well, they don't call me Johnny behind the deuce for nothing. How about another one? Go ahead, take another card. Now look at it. Well? Deuce of spades. Right. Deuce. All deuce. <laughs> <laughs> this deck isn't loaded, it's refrigerated. <laughs> Is that all you do? Just go around selling things? Well, what's wrong with that? Well, why is it getting me? It gets me every place. I'm just the kind of a fellow that's got to see what's on the other side of that next hill. Grandpa says that some folks can't see the gold at their feet for the pie rides in the mountains. Yeah? Well, your grandpa ought to impress that on you. The gold at your feet might be a couple of kids and a loving spouse instead of that tin star you got on your chest. Now, what's so good about you? You're nothing but a loose foot. Where's your spouse? Oh, well. It's different with me. I'm married to the whole world. Where have you ever been? Well, Grandpa took me to Durango when I was eight. Durango? Why, well, that's just a hole in the rocks. A lady, I've crossed the Black Hills of Dakota. I've seen the wondrous about the Yellowstone. I've ridden the Chisholm Trail of Texas, and I've watched the wedding of the rails at Promontory Point. Yes, ma'am. From the rocks of Maine to the plains of the Panhandle, let's ride down. I guess I'm just a born traveler, man. I've been traveling early. I've been traveling late. From New York City to the Golden Gate. And it looks like I'm never going to see my one. Skies up above me, green grass all around. I've been looking for something I have never found. And it looks like I'm never going to see my one. And it looks like. I'm never going What did you quit for? What's the string or something? You smell something burning? What a jumpy dude. Oh, no, something is burning. It's coming from over there by the locomotive. It's your feet. Stop my... Well, come on. Stop running. Wait a minute. Holy smoke. One shot and you cut the fuse off. Shut up. There's a man here that's rock. Bush rocket. Stay where you are, mister. Stop me. Hand over that piece and you'll make a butt first and start talking. You'll handle it, lady. I'll handle it, Dakota. Dakota! You ought to hear him. I said I'd handle it. Why, that man was fixing to drill you, miss. I've got a mind to give you the same. 
He was that noble peaceful as a lizard, and you bumped him in cold blood. He was going to pull a road agent spin on you, Mr. Hatcher shoot. Too bad you couldn't have shot him in the arm or something like she did, so he could talk. You insinuate now I wanted to keep him from talking? I am not the man to tangle with, Dakota. Why not? Because I'm the passenger on this engine. And if I don't get the tomahawk safely, there won't be any railroad. Oh, cut it out, both of you. You're right, man. Sorry I lost my temper. I'll bet you are. You shut up. Suckety? Ma'am. You and the boys bear the bushwhacker and get some shut eye. We got hard country to cross tomorrow. Creek. After we cross the trestle, Dead Horse Point's only five miles past. Not much time to lose if you want this engine in Tomahawk by Saturday noon. Come on, Chucky, the next car up yonder. Look, let me go with you. No. It gets awful tiresome riding on the top of this engine. And you got an empty horse there. You heard me? No. Any more complaints and we'll tie you up again. Now, wait a minute. You're supposed to take care of me, right? Well, I demand to be taken into your custody. Oh, all right, then. Hey, Dakota. Yes, ma'am? We're starting out ahead. Stay with the engine and keep the eyes open. It's engine country. I'll take care of that piece of cake. I'm just like it was you, Miss Why, thank you, Dakota. I'll be back. Well, thank you, Dakota. I'll be back. Who's got the cake? It's a good thing that Dakota ain't quick-triggered by sweet talk, or you'd be cooling by now. No such thing. You ought to be ashamed of yourself falling off of that cow poke. I'm not falling for nothing. Go on, you can't see the notches in his gun for the notch in his chin. I told you, shut up. Yes, ma'am. Well, this is it, Tuckety. Massacre Creek. Hmm, that's quite a gully down there, Miss Kitt. Come on, we're getting off the trestle. What's the matter? Well, listen. I don't hear nothing. That's what's the matter. Not even a bird, not a sound. <laughs> Guess you got food ones, Miss Kitt. Oh, no, she didn't. Huh? That's no bird. That's an engine signal, a rapaho. Come on. Back to the rock hill. Wait there till they bring the engine up. Hey, you and him wait there. I'm taking a look for you around. Just don't go saying far. You watch the steps. Kid, well, dude, you seem to know a lot about engine sound. What'd you learn? Oh, one season when I was with Wahoo Jim's Wild West show. Peanuts, popcorn, and saddle throw staff. Engine named Crooked Knife taught me all the signs. He had to quit show business when his daddy died. He's chief now of all the Arapahoes. Crooked Knife? You know Crooked Knife? Know him? We were pals. Why, well, he's a dirty heathen that's been making war and causing all the trouble. He is not a heathen. Crooked Knife happens to be a very high-class, clean-cut aborigine just trying to get along. And you certainly can't blame him for making war. you do the same thing if you were an Arapaho. I just wish Dakota and them would catch up with us. I'd like to get across that tussle and out of here. Pretty soonly, though. Fella could take his girl out here and do a little bussing. A little what? Bussing. Haven't you ever been bust? No, I guess you haven't. Should I have? Oh, a girl hasn't lived till she's been properly bust, believe me. Well, I, I guess I just don't exactly understand what bossing is. You know? Kissing. Oh. You know what kissing is? I've heard tell. You mean, you've really never been kissed? You bet I haven't. Well, now, how do you expect to meet up with your valentine and get hitched and settle down to raising a family if you've never even been here? Grandpa says I'll get hitched when the right time comes. Yeah? Well, you keep on this way, and the right time will find you a gun-toting old maid. Have, uh, have you ever been back? <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> From Maine to California, I've been bust proper. Look, maybe we better find Chuckity and ride on back. Wait a second. Tell me about it. Uh, about Bucky. Well, if you'll pardon me, Miss Kitt, I love life, and your grandpa wouldn't like it. Grandpa's not here. Oh, but Chuckity is. Somewhere. Oh, I can handle him. Well, 
It's kind of difficult to tell. Well, you know, you know what I mean. No. Well, take the Eskimo. The who? The Eskimo. That's sort of the North Pole of Arapaho. Well, now the Eskimo approaches the problem of busing with the nose. You see, when an Eskimo fella gets stuck on an Eskimo girl, well, he busses her like this. There, you see? Well, if that isn't a serious thing. Not so an Eskimo, it isn't. But suppose they had a bad cold. Yeah, well, uh, well, then there's the French. Now, in France, they do their busting sort of elegantly, like this. Oh, mon chéri, je t'adore, je t'aime. Well, what's all that signify? Well, it means, my darling, I adore it. I love it. Oh, sweet dog. Keep going. Well, there's all kinds of buses. There's a motherly bus, like this. Uh-huh. And the Uncle Joe I haven't seen you in seven years kind of bus, like this. Oh, second on the forehead, huh? Yeah. And then the friend of a friend kind of a bus, sort of just blowing it, yes? Yes, but what I want to know is, how does a fella in Colorado bust a girl in Colorado when he's sweet on her and she's sweet on him? Oh, that's not easy to do. Do it. <laughs> now, you just can't fake a genuine bus, Miss Chip. A fella has to be head over heels in love with a girl, and, well, the girl has to think she's just about the greatest thing since bottled beer. Well, supposing she does. Well, any holes like this, warm and tight. Because she's the one thing he's been looking for all his life. Understand? Nature's law. Exactly. And then he busts her on her little nose. Just a teaser. And then he busts her on one of her pretty eyes. Just to show he was only teasing. And then... Yes? Then he busts her lips. Oh. Andy, got some breakfast that I'll rot through your stretches. I got just one thing to say. Well? Some stupid. Get on your horse with a hard cane in the alley, yeah? They cut me off back to the cousin, Miss Kid. So I'll come back here to warn the boys. I know you'd make it all right. They can't sit on the way, Chuggity. Yeah. Dakota! You and the skinny fight on that corner and make every shot count. What about me? You and the rest of the greenhorn stay out of the way. Keep down behind the wagons and beat out the fires if they go. All We can just hold him off your dog. And we won't fight him in the dark. Hey, hey, Cook and Knife, it's me, Sonny. Put your head down here. But I told you, he and I were like, Cook and Knife, it's me. Oops, there goes my hat again. When do you always do that? Yeah, fair weather. Miss Kit, look, they're quickly. They're pulling out on us. Thank you, What about our wagon, dude? Well, a couple caught fire, but it wasn't serious. You and that suitcase full of fireworks. What did you say? You're a sample fireworks. If that wagon caught fire, we'd have all... Oh, Tuckety, come here. Where would they be? The engine. The main camp. It wasn't north of Thistle, dude. Why? Because if I could find that camp... Oh, I... you've gone loco. No, I got an idea, that's all. You know what those engines would do to you? They're wearing war paint. Look, I'm no hero, Miss Kid, believe me, but... If I don't do something tonight, we'll all get it. Nothing doing, dude. Well, maybe you don't mind sudden death, but there's a lot of places I haven't seen yet. I want to live. We'll give them as good as we get. Let them come. And then what? We'll push on, of course. Across the test of the dead horse point. What's the matter, Chuckity? Didn't you tell her? Tell me what? Well, I guess I forgot it, Miss Kip. Uh, the test was gone. They mean you can burn it down right after you and him lit out. I see the blazing from the ridge. How are you going to get a locomotive across Massacre Creek? Well, we'll figure it out when we get there. Well, if you just let me go, I know... Maybe dude's got a point, Miss Kit. After all, he's a city man. Maybe he's got some slick ideas. Not as slick as yours, Dakota. Now, there it goes again, riling me up. I'm listening, dude. 
I tell you, Crooked Knife is a friend of mine. He just didn't recognize me before. Oh, sure. Sure. Well, I got an idea. If I can get to see him, he let us go through. Now, here's the plan, and don't interrupt me. Until... seen him in months. He took that Wild West show back east. That was pretty good show, Johnny. We played standing room only in Cheyenne. Yeah. Remember that night you used me in your knife throwing axe in Laramie? You had mustache then, Johnny, but knife slip a little, cut it off. Yeah. Never been able to grow one since. Yes, those were good old days. Well, you remember what we used to yell when we needed help? Hey, Rube. Well, I'm calling Hey, Rube for you right now. You were good to me, Johnny, like blood brother. My people will not attack your iron horse. It's more than that, Chief. I want you to help to get that iron horse through the tomahawk. We're at war with the pale faces. Yeah, yeah, I know. Look, you remember my old card trick? Sure. Deuces. All deuces. Loaded deck. And you can't beat a loaded deck. Well, look, there's a loaded war you're fighting. I know, Johnny. But my people can never walk the white man's road. If I can sell him an idea, will you help me? I'll do what I can, Johnny. That's all I'm asking for. Oh, I brought one of my sample cases along. Fireworks. My people have never seen fireworks. That's the whole idea. Now, if you'll just step out there and start giving them the old kit, I'll be with you in a moment. I tell you again, the white man is very wise. He is a man of big medicine. We fire him because he your friend. But if he has big medicine, let him show a sign. Exactly why I am here. You say you want to see a sign? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I am going to show you a sign. The likes of which has never been witnessed west of the Allegheny Mountain. Now, if you'll just step back so these other gentlemen can see. Thank you. I am not going to pass along you friends with a little something that appears like a stick. A red stick with a little piece of white string coming out one end. I will take this stick, place it in the fire thus. Will you step back, sir? Thank you. I will light the fuse as a spring that is, and throw the stick into the air. Dog eater. What do you say, Chief? Dog eater. That's what I thought he said. <laughs> now, all I want you gentlemen to watch is exactly what I am about to do. Johnny, what's wrong? The fuse does not light. Yeah, I've had a lot of complaints about these Roman candles. Johnny, it's lit. Throw it. It's lit. Ah, now here you go, gentlemen. Watch what happens. <laughs> oh. Look at the mass sky rocket. You said you know what? Give me a match, Chuckity. You're going to sell up a whole shebang, huh? All them fireworks could give us him and his city ideas. Well, let's light him up and see what happens. Them, Johnny, they're scared to death. Oh, wait a minute, oh, where's that therapy? There it goes, Johnny. Happy New Year! Some display, huh, Chief? Like I always said, Johnny, there's no business like show business. <laughs> Good 
got to hand it to you, dude. They thought for that firework stunt like a charm. Crooked Knife says he'll have as many Indians here at dawn as we need. Well, that's just fine. What are they going to do, swim across Massacre Creek with that engine on their back? We're taking that engine apart. And us, the mules and the engines, we'll each carry a hunk down to her last nut and bolt. Whatever you say, ma'am. But well, I better scout on ahead and go on no more trouble on the trail from Dawson. We'd have a lot less trouble if someone else rode point. Someone we could trust. Now, uh, there he goes again. Miss Skinner, Mac, it only takes so much. Button up. You running this shebang or is that your loop? I'm running it, Dakota. You go on ahead and start. And you just sit down where I can watch you. Yes, ma'am. Be back by sunrise, miss. <laughs> Engines burned down the trestle, but now they got them working for us. And we got to come out in the open. Hey, Max, you and Pete ride into town and get the boys together. We got to stop that engine from reaching Tomahawk. If it's war they want, we'll give it to them. the Tomahawk and Western Railroad has been carried over the mountain. And now, at Dead Horse Point, the proud little locomotive stands reassembled and once again on tracks to steel. Well, Glory be, Miss Kiss. It worked. The engine worked. Oh, 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 oh. Well done, Mr. Keith. Uh, I got a few orders to start off before we leave. Tuck it in. You round up the mules and drive them back to Epcot. From here on in, we're going by sea. You need more help, Miss uh, Just rescue. Oh, I'm, I'm still obliged to you, Crooked Knight. And I'd be beholden if you stay with our wagons on in the Tomahawk. It'll be a pleasure, Miss. The door! Oh, the Tomahawk, Chief. We'll show some real fireworks. Now, Dakota, you ride with us. I'll see you, Mr. Keith. In exactly 40 minutes, the railroad loses its franchise unless we're in Tomahawk. Uh, don't worry none about my little girl. He'll get us there. 20 miles away, Savvy. And ten of them are graded up through the gorge. Let's go! Uh, just listen to them drivers. <laughs> if this ain't the sweetest little engine ever set down on track, I'll eat the whistle. Just wait until you get the full head of steam, Miss Kit. Keep your eyes on that right away. I wouldn't put it past so oh, yes, good. Dakota! I thought you had orders to ride back with Crooked Knife and his engine. Hope you'll forgive me, Mr. Kitt, stealing a ride. I stole away in the wood box. You gonna let him get away with it? Well, you just sit down, dude. Act like a passenger. So, uh, you're gonna be a peace officer in Tomahawk. Is that right, Dakota? That's my hope, miss. Where did you say you came from? Deadwood. Deadwood, huh? I was there last month. Hey, did you know Wild Bill Hitchcock? He taught you how to shoot. Isn't that what you told me? Sure did, Miss Kid. Wild Bill is a friend of mine. Is a friend of yours? When did you see him last? Oh, two weeks back, maybe. Before I hit the dust for Colorado. Yeah? Was he looking well? Why? Because when I saw him four weeks ago, he didn't look so good. He was laid out in his coffin after a back shooter named Jack McCall killed him dead. Don't make a move, none of you. Kit, look out. Oh, you no good double cross. Sorry to knock you cold, Miss Kit. You're just too slick with a stick shooter. I guess I had you figured out right after all, huh, Dakota? I got a job of work to do for a guy named Adolph. And part of it could be filling you full of holes. What's going on back there? All right, Sweeney, you can stop this tin can now. What are you talking about? You heard me. Stop the engine. Stop it yourself. As long as I'm on two feet, yeah. I volunteer for Tomahawk. I won't aim so careful next time. Stop this engine or I'll oh, get back. Don't be a fool. Grab his gun, please. Get, get his gun. I can't leave the property. Bad guns ahead. Are you stupid, dude? I, I don't need no gun to take care of you. Got him hanging on the fire coming up. Open it up, Sweeney. Open it up faster, Sam. If I do, you both go on the side. You heard me. Open it up. I ain't turning around, Dakota. If you're gonna shoot, go ahead. 
Shoot me in the back. The quarter just fell overboard, Mr. T. Yes, yes. That deed was the right pretty uppercut. Miss Kate, are you all right? Oh, Grandpa, never forgive me letting that yellow belly knock me cold. But the doodles, Johnny. Why, I reckon he's just fooled, Mr. T. Just keep your attention on the top. I'll take care of you. Looks like Dakota couldn't stop her after all. All right, you men, get on your horses. Now, wait till the engine passes us and aim for the passenger. If you can't hit the passenger, pull your bullets into the boiler. Now, let's get moving. No, they'll blow your head off, dude. You mean you wouldn't like to see that happen? When are you going to start remembering that you're the passenger? That's all I mean to you, huh? Just the passenger? You sound a wood box. Yes, ma'am. We're losing pressure. They're shooting up the boilers. There's only two knots and some hot we can't help now. Engines. Engines in a puppy of fouls. Grandpa. Grandpa is looking like. from Dawson and his varmints to spell. I'll get this engine into town. We got a quarter of a mile to go. We can't, Grandpa. We can't. The boiler's all perforated. Just two minutes left, Miss Chip. Two minutes to fulfill that contract. I happen to be mayor of Tomahawk, sir, and I say your watch is wrong. You got exactly one minute and 15 seconds. Oh, uh, looks like Dawson's pickled our peaches after all, Grandpa. We'll never make it in time. So you're the mayor of Tomahawk, are you? I am, sir, and these gentlemen are the town councilmen. Then listen to me, please. You're not going to let, let a little thing like a quarter of a mile keep this railroad from getting its franchise, are you? Well, there's nothing I can do, stranger. According to the charter, the railroad's got to be in operation by high noon, which is now exactly 55 seconds away. But you're overlooking what this railroad could mean to you, Mr. Mayor. Not only the gold and silver it can take out of these mountains, but think what it'll mean in commerce and in schools for your kids. Why, you can make a civilization out of a frontier. I'm the first passenger on the train, Mr. Mayor, and there's my ticket. I'm proud of it. I want to tell my grandchildren about it. But the territorial law. Colorado's a state now. For a whole month, she's been the 38th state in the Union. You want Tomahawk to grow with her, don't you? Now, what do you say, Mr. Mayor? The future of the West is in your hands. Oh, for Pete's sake, Mayor, hurry. Time to waste. <laughs> uh, gentlemen, uh, councilmen of Tomahawk, I um, I hereby move that we extend the corporate limits of Tomahawk uh, to the rear of this here locomotive. I second it. Uh, all in favor? Uh, motion carried. This mayor of Tomahawk, I hereby declare that the T&W Railroad has fulfilled its charge. <laughs> Well, kid, you sure done your part, honey. Thanks, Grandpa. Here's, uh, here's your bag. Seems like you won the right to wear that permanent, gal. Oh, no, Grandpa, I think. I'm giving up gun -flinging. You what? By glory, no dog ever give up his star till he was dead in his track. I know, Grandpa. But I'm not a thief. I'm a thief. There's a difference, you know. How'd you find that out? And the man I'm going to get hit to? Him, Grandpa. The dude over there. Why, that low down, quick crawling lizard. No such thing. He's a traveling man. A traveling man? A drummer? If you got a gun, dude, start drawing. You'll get me purple, Grandpa, and I'll stop it. Stand back, get away. Stand back, I say. I hate to cool you off, Grandpa, but that's just what I do. Well, well. That's the way you feel about him? Well, you give me back my deputy, Star, and take me. Take my blessing. Come here, Johnny. Shake hands with Grandpa. Howdy. Howdy. So you're fixing to marry my little gal, huh? Chip. I, uh, I've been declaring my intentions, Johnny. Well, you know, I, I'm not the man for you. You said it yourself. I got a loose foot. You're 
I never said I loved you. You know. And I love you. But I wouldn't make you unhappy for the world. I don't want to be on the go, kid. Home to me is just a one-night whistle stop. Well, maybe you wouldn't have such a loose foot if, if I gave you a permanent limp. Oh, kid, honey, there's no use flying in the face of face. I'm warning you, dude. If you try to leave us, I'll, I'll shorten your shoe size. And start shooting, kid. Because when we get back to Epitaph, I'm heading east. So long, honey. Well, I'll be dumb. I'll be dumb. I guess it's it, Johnny. Oh, I missed you so. I'll miss you too. You take care of yourself and everything. Johnny, aren't you gonna bust me? And to think I once had to show you how. Watch out for yourself, dear. Don't you worry, honey. A man born to travel has a way with the world. Here, let me fix your hat. Oh, Johnny, I'm so proud of this hat. Come down. Conductor number one, Tomahawk and Western Railroad. Now, don't be late for dinner. Wait, why the C&W is always on time. All aboard! All aboard! Yes, yes, uh, my train. I forgot my train. I know you do. I sent the girls home for it. Here they come now. Come on, Johnny. Johnny, I'm sorry I saw you this time. That came with the nicest wedding present a man ever got. Thank you, dear. Hey, girl. Say goodbye to your father. Goodbye, Connie. Goodbye, Barbara. Marion. Marilyn. Joyce. coming forward for a well-earned curtain call. Dan Daly and Ann Baxter. You know, you are two of our most versatile stars. You both appeared in musical, drama, comedy, and now western. Well, you know, Bill, actors have to be versatile. I think that acting is about the only profession left in in which it isn't wise to specialize. Yes, at one time, stage actors played the same role year after year, like, uh, well, Joe Jefferson in Rip Van Winkle. Oh, he was just lucky. Why do you think that, Dan? Well, what if he started out playing Little Lord Fauntleroy? A very <laughs> short career. <laughs> <laughs> like trying to be an avenue forever. I'd rather play lots of different types, but it's much more interesting. You know, all this talk about character actors brings really one to my mind. The new sensation at your studio, 20th Century Fox. You must be referring to Selma Ritter, Bill. Yes, I am. Have you caught her new picture as young as you feel? Yes, I saw a preview of it. She's just wonderful. And you see, Annie, Selma did things just backwards. First, she was a character actress and never star in as young as you feel. <laughs> well, that's what's so fascinating about the picture, isn't it? You never know what's going to happen from one day to the next. Oh, yes, I do, Bill. My luck's toilet it's so faithful. I wouldn't miss them. Well, then you won't ever have to worry about your career. With your ability, plus a luck complexion, well, you just can't say. Well, that lets me out. You need these tired character actors in your next week's play? <laughs> <laughs> no, Dan. Next week, we're featuring some very young players. We have Farley Granger and Joe Nevin. And co-starring with them will be Diana Lynn. We won't miss that, Bill. Good night. Good night, Bill. Good night. It was a great show.